This episode of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on May the 15th, 2017. In this episode, we're going to cover two topics. Uh, the first one will be Magic Jack, the phone system, and the next topic will be a rant by me. Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. Right. Good afternoon, everyone. There's not many of us, Here we are. <laughs> but we'll do. We'll do. Okay, it's one o'clock and time to start again. And today, um, I remembered that uh, the last couple of weeks or a couple of weeks ago, uh, a few members seemed to be interested in uh, how the Magic Jack worked and how much it cost and all of that. So I thought today I would. Um, dive into Magic Jack a little bit. Um, I use it myself. I like it. It works. So the first thing that we're going to look at here is the Magic Jack um, dongle itself. This is the old one. This is the one that, that I have. I bought this seven, eight years ago. And it has, it has worked ever since. Um, not a, I've never had a problem with it. Uh, Magic Jack is always good about updating the software and all of that stuff. So uh, I I like it. It works. You can't buy this one anymore. But I I don't want to. This is uh, the Magic Jack Plus. This is the one they were selling in Walmart. Um, at uh, 70 bucks and you got the first year free um, but uh, this item here uh, is in fact this item what it does uh, the first one required that you plug it into a computer to have it work it needed programming on the computer to make it work this one does not they've gotten all of the circuitry into the magic jack little box this plug just powers it. It provides 5 volts for the USB dongle here to work. Uh, you plug this directly into your uh, router or router modem if you have one from, from uh, the big suppliers like Rogers and you plug your telephone in. So all you do is plugging it into the wall plugging it into the modem, attach a telephone, and you're good to go. You have phone. What about when you're traveling, Bob? You're in a motel. Um, here again, it, it, most um, hotels, motels, have uh, Ethernet jacks in the room. Okay, so you're just going to take, take maybe a six-foot cable with you, six-foot Ethernet cable, and uh, plug it into the jack in the room, plug the magic jack into it, you have phone. Your own phone number, with your own phone number long it follows distance. you around like a little puppy so, yeah, long distance yeah in North America in Canada the United States yeah, um, this is your own phone or is yeah telephone calls are free um, in Europe uh, or anywhere else in the world magic jack to magic jack is free okay but that's just the same as Skype so why bother just use Skype um, but this is great for traveling because you can take a small compact phone with you or you can take the hotel's telephone, unplug it, plug it into yours. Or if you're staying elsewhere, you take a small compact phone with you. It doesn't have to be so much of a much as long as it plugs into a wall. And there you go. You, you have your own phone. Um, there are different iterations of this uh, of this item out now, but like I said, this this is the old version. It plugs into the side of into a USB slot in your computer, and the USB slot, along with uh, communicating with the Magic Jack through programming, 
supplies it with power, 5 volts. Now, when you, uh, you can't, once you've got the magic jack set up, and it's relatively easy to set it up, um, if you have any problems, you can call uh, and get uh, telephone support from Magic Jack. They'll walk you through the process of setting up e either the uh, the brand new Magic Jack or uh, the old version. But uh, you're going to buy a new one. You can you can still buy these at Walmart. I'm pretty sure you can. And uh, what you need to do then is uh, set yourself up a uh, an account with Magic Jack. Um, you allow the, ma the Magic Jack software onto your computer and you use your computer to set up the, uh, the Magic Jack dongle. And once that's done and the dongle has been flashed with the software, uh, this particular one, the Magic Jack Plus, you don't need the computer anymore or phone calls. Just uh, plug it into, like I said, plug it into your router, plug the telephone in. Give it power, and you're away to the races. Um, but the uh, Magic Jack reps will walk you through that if you get totally lost. Uh, here again, there are a few uh, videos on YouTube on how to set this all up. And as I said before, I can recommend this uh, for people who travel in North America. Uh, traveling in Canada, traveling um, in the United States, uh, I believe even in Mexico. Um, so, um, because we're all, North America, Mexico, United States, and Canada are all in the same uh, geography as far as the internet goes. Um, Mexico is not South America or Central America, it's North America. Um, and so it's, it's that easy, folks, um, and I would urge you, if the, the cost of the Magic Jack itself, the, the dongle itself is about 70 bucks, but the first year is free. That makes this worth about $35. $35 a year after that. 35 bucks a year. That's what? Um, $3 a month? That's three bucks a month for a phone. That ain't bad. Um, there, are, there are internet telephone systems um, out and about, um, which are, um, the one I use at, at the house is Talkit. Now that's a local company. Talkit is a local company here in Hamilton. The, the head office is in Hamilton. Uh, but they are in a bit of trouble. I'm just waiting for them to go by the wayside. Um, and uh, then I'll have to f find another arrangement for internet telephone service. But uh, as, as long as they're, they're uh, in business, I'll stay with them because the service is pretty good. Um, I wanted to say uh, a few other things about Magic Jack while, I, while it was on my mind. Um, you can... Depending on the number you have, on the telephone number you currently have, you may be able to uh, have it ported to Magic Jack. When we say ported, that means that the number can be carried from your current carrier to your new carrier. Magic Jack does allow some porting. The other thing that, uh, if you can't get that porting done, then you can buy a local Hamilton number. And that's what I have done. I, I couldn't get my old my phone number ported, so I bought a local Hamilton number. Another an extra ten dollars a year. Uh, that's good because then people that call you on that number don't have to call long distance. Well, your cell phone well I what I do is I I uh, have the Magic Jack number uh, two eight nine seven nine nine zero one five two. Anybody that has a 799 number is using Magic Jack, by the way. <laughs> um, and I just simply forward that number to my cell phone. So I don't have to have a working telephone in my house 
to forward to, it forwards through software. It forwards through the Magic Jack company. I don't do anything other than go into uh, the software on the internet for Magic Jack and tell it, forward my phone calls, here is the number. <coughs> Voicemail, the same thing. Um, if nobody picks up, it will, it will uh, send me uh, an email uh, with voice converted to text. Not bad. And uh, if I'm not forwarding, um, my uh, cell phone uh, just forwards voicemail to mail, and I get it as um, as as voice in uh, a voice file in in mail, which is pretty good. So it, it has a whole bunch of features. Um, and uh, it can remember who you've called. It can make a list of uh, numbers you, you frequently call um, and all kinds of things. In the, in the software on your computer, if you want to hook your, your telephone to your, to your laptop all the time, it will do that for you, not a problem. You can still use your laptop. On yes, you can still use your laptop. Uh, you've just plugged an extra thing into, uh, USB. into a USB port, that's all. And it works really quite well. I'm uh, well pleased with the way Magic Jack works. Any questions about Magic Jack? No. No. Okay. For those of you who have not attended and you have any questions about Magic Jack, shoot me an email. And I will uh, attempt to uh, answer what you have. Now, uh, we, we may come back to that if somebody can think of a question, but we're going to move on right now. You want to cry? Okay, this has been all over the news for the last number of days. A ransomware cyber attack. And folks, this is a big one. It has uh, crossed 150 countries. It has crossed thousands and thousands and thousands of businesses and knocked them out. It has taken down government facilities, knocked them out totally. It has taken down hospital services in Britain. The National Health Service is offline. Doctors cannot work. They can't get data. They can't get patient records. They can't get nothing. In the United States, the, the only one that's admitted fessed up so far to be a knocked off is FedEx. But think about the data that they have every minute going into their system that they can know that they they couldn't access. Where's my parcel? I have no idea. We don't even know if it got to an airplane. So um, here begins the rant. Where did this come from? What happened? Why? I am going to lay the entire episode of Wanna Cry Ransomware at the doorstep of the NSA. That outfit in the United States is uh, the National Security Administration and their responsibilities are to scour the world for threats to the United States. Also, they are a weapons development outfit. Particularly, cyber weapons. How to break into computer systems. Hardened computer systems. Um, how to break into our own systems for their own national purposes. Why do I want to lay this at the feet of the NSA? Well, a couple of years ago, ransomware came onto the scene as something new. Uh, what it does is it encrypts all the data, well not all of it, but what it knows about. It encrypts the data on your hard drive, pictures, documents, 
um, files of most kinds that it understands the file extension. The file extension is dot something, dot doc, dot txt, something like that. It understands that. It will lock it up with encryption. It takes the file and it mashes all of the data to an encryption algorithm that is unbreakable. It's military grade encryption at 1,028 bits. And um, it would take a thousand supercomputers, a thousand years to break one document. And once that's done, they've got to start all over again because the next document is encrypted differently. Okay, so you're not going to get into this. The, the, in the early days of encryption, it was very difficult to do. You needed uh, side-loaded programs on your computer to take the document and mash it all up to a very particular algorithm and then it would put it back onto your computer. It would dis it not destroy the old document but change it such that only, only the, the decryption software would allow you to see it. Many companies came up with ideas how to encrypt your entire computer and um, that was done, but it was really difficult to do. It took a techie like me to do it properly. Now all of that can be done with a couple of mouse clicks. It's so easy to do. The whole procedure of encrypting data um, has been, um, it, what sort I'm looking for, James? Dumbified? Dumbified, yeah. And to that end, if it's so easy to do, then a program that doesn't have to do a lot of different things can do it. They do it with something like an if-then statement. If this, then do that. If this, then do that. And if the do that is the next if this, it just keeps going and going and going. If this, do that. And that's how these files are encrypted. The NSA, as I said before, is uh, one of these outfits that looks for a way to weaponize things. And when they talk about software, they want to weaponize software to, uh, to have a weapon against perceived enemies of their state. North Korea, for instance. Sony, for another. <laughs> um, and so they weaponized ransomware. Even up till a few months ago, ransomware, these kinds of attacks, were just on individuals. You would go to a website, the website would have been previously attacked um, by a hacker who planted um, a redirection um, piece of code in the advertisement you were about to see. So you were redirected to the hacker's website. Unknowingly, you downloaded the, uh, the encryption software and boom, you're, you're done. You're toast. It happens that fast, faster than I can say it. Um, and so these were done on an individual basis. It would get you and it would get you and it would get you. But this is something quite different in that entire countries, entire companies, entire entities like the National Health Service were totally infected in hours. Not days, not weeks, hours. They got up in the morning, turned their computers on, and it started. And by lunchtime, nobody was getting anything done. And here again, 
the NSA weaponized the software. What happened next? Well, th I don't have a problem with the NSA weaponizing software. What I have a problem with is them being completely, totally stupid and put this stuff on an insecure system, which is exactly what they did. Well, how long did it take for the hackers to find this system and find this stuff? Months. And these are the people that are insisting that well, we need to have all of the decryption and encryption keys for the internet because we need to be able to look at stuff. Trust us. It'll be safe with us. Trust us. Let's see. A pickup truck weighs what, Freddie? 3,500 pounds? I can throw it that far, and that's how far I'm going to trust a government entity with weaponized software. That's how far I'm going to trust them with the keys to the kingdom. Okay? The keys to the kingdom are the encryption keys of the internet. <coughs> a very few companies hold these keys. And believe me, People have tried to get at them. They've done every trick in the book. And in one case, a couple of years ago, they did, the hackers did get through. And they did get the keys to the kingdom. But not all of them. Only a few. A very few. Which were quickly taken out of service. And replaced with others. But can you imagine the mischief that could be done if the hacker community, government entities, had the keys to the kingdom. And the NSA wants to keep them safe for us. How do you spell the word jackass? Rant over. Okay, rant is over. If the NSA created this, can they correct it? No. No. What has been done is uh, you have to sort of understand how encryption works. Um, uh, it's it's a science all unto itself. But uh, the uh, once uh, a document is encrypted uh, by a method, unless you know the keys unless you created the keys yourself, n nothing on this planet is going to be able to decrypt it. Nothing. Um, and so, um, once this, uh, this weaponized program was into the wild, the, uh, the hackers themselves can make their own encryption keys. They don't have to use what the NSA gave them. They can make their own. Doesn't take much. Just uh, uh, a random, a pseudo random number generator is what it takes. And uh, you can uh, generate a random number that's 1,028 bits, and you have military grade encryption. Hell, you can even do it by yourself by just doing what I call the face roll technique. Where you take the keyboard, slam it on your face, and just roll your face around. You'll eventually have a... Yeah, eventually you'll have an encryption key. You won't know what it is, but you'll have it. Yeah. Um, and so it's... Um, the... the uh, I'm not going to jump into uh, that rabbit hole of how encryption works. I'm just going to tell you that it does work. That's why you can safely go to the bank on your computer. Um, what do they mean when they're 
saying, oh, you should have all your updates and make sure you know, okay. Microsoft that. Okay, yeah. Mar Microsoft put one out in March? Or yes, Microsoft, Microsoft knew about um, the, uh, the way that uh, this piece of software uh, roamed around the network. Okay, and that's what they patched. Wait, yeah, they they filled up the way this program roamed around a computer network. This goes way way back to viruses, how viruses work. Once ensconced onto a computer, the virus actively looks around for other computers on the network. It it pings various numbers that it knows about, and if it gets a reply, it says, "Oh." Ooh, there's a computer over there. Jump, and over it goes. It affects that computer and looks around for another one. Now it may find something on the same network, or it may find reference to another network on that computer. Well, once it's found the reference, bing, over it goes. And so it just through that method. It jumps from location to location to location. Um, there are a hundred ways, a thousand ways of doing that. And uh, Microsoft in March patched the one that WannaCry ransomware was using. But uh, remember wh who you're dealing with here. The National Health Service in Britain um, has not updated a computer in 14 years. <laughs> They are using Windows XP. Now most companies are cheap and don't want to upgrade. Well, it's it, in their in their in the in the case of the National Health Service, it's it's not so much a question. Well, it is a question of money, but it's a question of resources. Uh, they just do not have the IT resources to upgrade um, an entire entity like the National Health Service, which services hundreds of millions of people on a daily basis. Um, the other place where this went, and so we know that uh, the, their their involvement in it was minimal, was China. Yeah. Okay, now why did it hit so hard in China? China considers Windows XP to be free software for Microsoft because they had three OEM keys 15 years ago and they just cloned them <laughs> for everybody. Well, I'm being facetious, but the Chinese government really considered Windows XP to be free software for Microsoft. They just gave it to everybody. <laughs> and it's the same the world over. Okay, A lot of these countries um, that are now currently uh, trying to deal with uh, this ransomware, you can pretty much guess that the vast majority of the computers on their networks in their countries are Windows XP or uh, at the very least Windows Vista. 7 and 10 uh, are updating automatically. 7 is going to stop in the not too distant future, ne this time next year. 7 will not be updating anymore. It'll be 10. So, um, so there, there you go. That's, that's why uh, this attack was so devastating to so many countries, entities, and people. Um, what more can I say? Any other questions about one? Uh, yeah, what, what can these large institutions do now to correct the issue? There's only one thing they can do. Hope against hope that their ID, IT departments um, are smart enough to back up if not on an hourly basis, on a daily basis. Keep those backups off of the network. Format the hard drives on all these computers. Reinstall Windows, reinstall your software, reinstall your data. Or just pay? When, well, no, that's, even that's not gonna work. Um, Even that's not going to work. Um, the um, the ransom that they're asking for 
If, if you were the person that dumped wanna cry on the National Health Service and demanded money from them, would it be 300 bucks? No. <laughs> no. 30 million maybe. And so that's, that's the thing that the people that are, have done this do not have the decryption keys. They just don't. If they did, by this time they would have figured out that they are not just getting money, that they're filthy, stinking wretch. It's like it was done on purpose, really. Yeah, it was done on purpose to see how far this would go. And would everybody saying, well, can we ever figure out who did this? No, we'll never figure out who did it. You'll never figure it out. My, my, my mind is on the, a guy named Timmy who's in Florida. Yeah, living in his mom's basement. Yeah. No, this, um, as far as this being loosed on the world by one guy, no, no. No, this uh, some some uh, actor, uh, some uh, some nation actor did this. Uh, I have not heard yet how North Korea has been affected, but if they're not, hmm, might be a few questions asked there. Um, so, any other questions about WannaCry or ransomware? What, what, are, what danger are we in personally? Um, if your computer is um, attached through the internet to an entity that has become infected, the, the entity on the other end of that connection that's infected their computers are looking around for other computers on the network and yours might be it. So it would just send you the packet of information about where to download the software and it would download in the background and run. And so you become infected. That's not the case now. Um, I will tell you a, a little something that, that happened the day before yesterday. Um, some kid in Britain was, was uh, in trying to investigate this software to find out what the hell happened. And um, he had a copy of the software on his machine um, and uh, he was looking over the code and found a reference to a website um, in the code and when he looked up the website uh, the website had had uh, not been activated. In other words, nobody had bought the domain name. So what did he do? Just for dumps and giggles, he bought the domain name, activated it, and within minutes, the attack stopped. The reference to the website, to the domain name, in the and the attack software was um, a kill switch, essentially. If this domain is activated, stop all activity. And that's what happened. The kid did it by mistake. He did it by mistake. But now, but now other researchers are looking at other kinds of software to see if they have a similar kind of kill switch in them. Because once somebody does something like this, you can pretty much guess that 70% of the rest of the software out there that's like it does the same thing. This is coming in by searching on the internet. This is not coming through an email. Or like that, it, when the ransomware hits you at your home, it's come to you through email or it's come to you through uh, an infected ad server on the internet. Um, but in 90% of the cases it comes to you um, through an email. Great little cat video here. Click here. 
and you I've click had, there and it's gotcha. I've had emails that, that don't have a subject it's, and it's somebody using say don't, a family member's name. Yeah, don't touch no it. No subject. So these things, they're deleted before I even, you know, bang, yeah. delete. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't, you, you know, you don't so allow that stuff to be touched. Yeah. They are, they've been around uh, in my computer anyway lately, so. Yeah. I get emails from Hilton Honors, but they don't even use my real name. They say Jesse, I'm like, well, I'm not Jesse. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, totally I mean, I used to be Jesse back in one of my schools, but that was a mistake. Yeah. Well, that's it. Well, one of them used my sister's email. I was and she's passed away six years ago, and they used my sister's name. And they, it came in with my sister's name on it, and she doesn't mean she's gone. I mean, yeah. you know, and it, this, you this, something back in yeah. my old... Yeah, this this kind of thing happens, but that that's um, for you the, the the home gamer. That's how it's going to happen. It's going to happen through email or um, jumping on an infected web server. Um, any other questions about uh, ransomware? I have a question. Yes. Maybe I should have asked the bank this morning. I went to the bank to cash a check. Yep. And while I'm fiddling to get out my access card, so you don't have to sign that. And so she took it and I put my access card in. She gave me the cash. If I, if I had saved to Great West Life, I never got the check. How can they prove that I did When the When the, uh, uh, she, she uh, put that check into a little machine, it was only in there for a second. Okay, it had printed a number on it. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. It had printed a number on yeah. it to say that the bank has now possession of your check. Yeah, but I was it's, yeah. yeah. And and, uh, and as far as far as signing checks anymore, that is that is passe. Yeah. Yeah. You can take this kid, if you have the correct oh, bank. Yeah. You can take this. Yeah, no. Take a picture of your check. Yeah. Oh. And uh, this kid. from the bank's yeah. website. And you have deposited your money. And that something? Doesn't it go through QR codes? We're going no, off topic, no, no, no more QR codes. It just uh, the. No, I, I, thought it like, I thought it did like pretty much a QR code, but with the bottom of the check where. No, 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 no. Nope. It. Uh, well, yes, the, the, the scanners at the bank will scan that number at the bottom of the check, that big long number with lots of zeros and, and numbers on it. It just scans that number and uh, says, oh, yeah, okay, yes, you have an account. And here's your money. I think we've become too trustworthy. Well, that may well be. That may well be. But um, as far as. somewhat trustworthy than. Not trusting anyone. Yeah. Know as, as as far as the, the the modern world, and and doing things the way we were taught to do when we were children. Okay. I will bet you a dollar to a hole in a donut. You know how to write a check. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when I write a check, I don't just mean put the uh, put the name in for the check mm -hmm. and the amount sign. No, you know how to write a check, don't you? From start to finish. The bank's name and address and your name and address and the two and the, the amount line and the sign line and the account number line. That's how you write a check. We learned to do that when we were children. Meanwhile. <laughs> he don't know from nothing. <laughs> okay. So, yes, we understand these systems because they go back a thousand years, and it's pretty tough to fool us. It's pretty tough to fool you. Him, easy peasy. <laughs> I mean, just because I wasn't born in like the Jurassic period. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful. So, yeah. So there you go. Um, what does it mean um, if they say this is still ongoing? Does this mean it's still active, or yeah, it's that it's people haven't spoken up yet. Uh, a a little bit of both. 
there are going to be many entities that uh, will not fess up yeah. to, to the fact that they've been attacked. Uh, it's bad PR. Um, there are other entities that will not know for some time until they try and access data on maybe a, a far off uh, computer somewhere that you know they had data on and it, it became infected and now it's it's uh, it's encrypted and they won't know that until they try to access the data um, and the bibs and bobs of the of this will start coming up again over the next week or so uh, as people try to do copycat stuff or maybe these the people who who did this, these, uh, these state actors, I, I'm pretty sure it was a state actor that did this, um, they're going to try and do something else just because they can. Um, so it ain't over, what, folks. What happened to the good old days? Well, people would just send the virus that opened up your, uh, your CD track. <laughs> Yeah, okay, well. And then you use, use the CD tray as a coffee mug. Yeah. Well, well, what happened to the good old days? They went after XP, they might try something else and go after 8.1s or. Yeah, you know. well, J James asked me this morning, well, well, is this all about Windows 10? No. The people that wrote this stuff wrote it on the Windows XP platform. And they used the dynamically linked libraries of Windows XP to do it. Now, a dynamically linked library is just a ball of data that is, in fact, a program. It's a program that is shared by many other programs on the computer, dynamically linked. Um, and so they got it all working on Windows XP, then they moved on to the, to the newer operating systems and made it work in there because now they know what dynamically linked libraries they're working with. And eventually they get it to work in Windows 10. A little more difficult, but once it's done, it's done. Um, and like I said, uh, as we went through this, uh, Windows XP uh, seems to be the main target of these other countries because that's the operating system that they are currently using in most instances. Uh, I think we should just go back to the good old DOS days. Yeah, well, you might be better if they did. You couldn't do a lot with it. <laughs> Eight I mean, bits, you couldn't no, make it do a lot. There's definitely no internet to do anything. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions um, that we might uh, get into in the next uh, 10 or 12, 12 minutes to finish out the day? There, is there new stuff? Is there new above 10 coming? No, according to Microsoft, Windows 10 is it. Yeah. It will never change its name, they say. Yeah. It will never change its, uh, its backbone, they say. Um, and so, uh, will there be something new in the, in the not too distant future? No, there will just be uh, upgrades and upgrades and and updos of what you have now. Um, I, I think that Microsoft is trying to get out of the operating system business. That's what I think. They because they want to be out of it in 10 or 12 years. Because they make a, pretty much the exact same amount of money from just their console. Yeah. Xbox. Yeah. And, and uh, web services and all the rest of it. They make all that money. I don't think they want to be in the operating system business. They want to be out of it in 10 or 12 years. Well, that's good. And we all moved to Linux and everyone lived happily, happily ever after. Yeah. Happily. Um, the word that I'm trying to say. Now, Linux. Um, yes, a lot of computers were, um, were not infected. Linux computers were not infected. But because this ransomware could see the files sitting on a Linux computer and it knew about the file extensions that the files were, it could then encrypt them. 
it had nothing to do with the operating system. Once the encryption starts, it has nothing to do with the operating system. It's how the file is manipulated by the software. So yes, Linux computers, yeah, the file systems on them were corrupted. But um, they were being accessed by a Windows computer. Right. Okay. So if the Windows computer could not see the Linux computer, it was fine. Yeah. But if it could see it, it could see the files on it, it could change them. Well, last week you mentioned, uh, like, take your updates if they come along. Like, Edge, I, had a, I got the little thing that said yeah. there was an update, and I foolishly did not believe and take it. I have not seen that since. Is there anywhere I can go to yes. find that? Yes. Edge There's, there is a, uh, a place where you can go. Uh, just uh, go into your Cortana okay. and uh, type in the word update. And uh, the first thing that comes that will be check for updates. Um, and in my case, I don't have any updates um, on the way. Um, your device is up to date. Okay, uh, it's going to tell you tell you what the update history is, and it's going to tell you what's coming. Okay, um, so you can look at it in that light. I don't think I'm going to get anything on this for a while. Uh, my uh, my office computer took an update um, last week, so. Uh, I don't know what this one's going to do. Also, funny enough with Windows and updates, all computers don't get the same update at the same time. No. I, I will get my update before no. he does. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're parsed out to different entities as they go. Okay, any other questions about questions? These updates, they went automatically? Uh, yes, they do. In, in Windows 10, um, updates are automatic. You can, it's difficult to turn, go in and turn them off. It can be done, uh, but that's why they make it difficult. Yeah, I don't want to turn them off. I just yeah. want to know if yeah. they yeah. automatic. Yeah. Um, you know, Adobe Flash it, said it, had a, it did go ahead and update, but I, I see it. Yeah, it says it'll do it in 45 days or something. Go ahead and do it in 45 days. I'm not going to bother. Yeah, you. yeah. yeah. Unless stuff stops, right. stops working. Yeah, and unless stuff stops working, and that could happen. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, was, I was reading an edge, and, it, and it's saying that uh, all the extensions are there to help. Help what? Yeah, help uh, on the internet. Help, help you go there, and it's going to protect you. And okay, extensions. <laughs> extensions are little add-ons to the program itself that um, can, do pretty much can do all different kinds of functionalities. Come on in, you're late yeah. by an hour. Okay, extensions. Um, you can get an ex uh, all kinds of extensions uh, for Firefox. There's thousands of them. I just uh, noticed that they're in, they're in Google, they're in yeah. Edge, yeah, uh, they. What they do is they uh, make certain kinds of things automatic. Okay, so if you have um, uh, if you have a certain procedure that you do in Facebook, and you do it all the time, and it takes you twenty clicks to get to it. There's an extension out there probably that will do it in one. Oh, okay. So it's, it's a shortcut. Oh. Uh, it's not so much a shortcut as it. it uh, if, if I was to put a thing it's simple, Pinterest, it, yeah. would it protect me? Because it, Google won't let you put Pinterest. Okay? It tells you it's not safe. Yeah. yeah uh, it, if, it's, if it's a Google extension, it might be. But I would, ch I would check with others on the internet. Yeah, yeah, buddy. Before you do that. Um, okay. Now, now here again, uh, getting a uh, an extension for Pinterest 
for any of these, whether it be uh, Google or, or Firefox or whatever, what it's doing is it's automating what you want to do. So ordinarily, if you could get onto Pinterest, it would take you five clicks to do what you wanted to do. But this extension just makes it one click automatic. All right? Um, other extensions, um, two that I use, and that one everyone on the internet uses because they hate them, uh, is Adblocker Plus. That's, that's technically an extension. I've yeah. seen that there and I thought, you know, don't just don't touch. Um, you don't know, so don't touch. Yeah. yeah. Uh, ad blocker is 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 changing. Um, they have sold out. Oh, okay. <laughs> they, they have sold out to the big guys, and it's changing in such a way that uh, um, it in the not too distant future it'll be why bother. <laughs> um, uh, but the other extension I would use is um, anytime a web page has a video, um, anything that can run on Flash, uh, I can download. Download and actually put it on a computer. Yeah, there are there are extensions that will allow you to download YouTube videos. Okay. Uh, if you're on YouTube and you're looking around for a place to download, you ain't gonna find it. It's well, not there. I've never really looked for it, but yeah, one, I thought I missed your one, uh, yeah. your video, and uh, somehow I thought the email got deleted, and I kept going back and I couldn't find it. So I thought, okay, I'm just gonna go to the website and see if I can get it off of there. Yeah. But I didn't know how. And I was yeah. Just well, there is without without an extension to do it, there is no how. Yeah, okay. It can't be done. Oh, you need okay. an extension for your browser to do it, okay. and the only the the best one is for Firefox. I think Quick Time, Quick Time, or Real Player. Well, don't don't be putting Real Player on your computer, please. No, I forget which one I, I use. It was either Quick Time or yeah. Real Player. Yeah, but there is an extension for uh, uh, for Firefox to download videos. Um, the nice thing about that. Um, YouTube doesn't want you to do it, but once you've downloaded a video and you and you put it into uh, into uh, software editing software, you can then edit together or edit into only the parts you want. So if it's a 10-minute cat video, but you're only interested in this two minutes, with the download with the downloaded file, you can manipulate that file to get you the two minutes you want. Uh, and what I do is. I uh, download shows, then while I'm at work and sitting on my butt, I just watch shows and I don't need internet for it. Well, I just link to things. Yeah, yeah, but if if yeah, what he's doing is is he's he's putting them on a player yeah. that doesn't have a connection to the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's just a player. Because I don't use data and at work I don't have access to internet. Yeah, so I just. Now <laughs> so we're hearing about it, eh? Oh, no, no. I, I can't. Most of my time at work is just me sitting on my keister. <laughs> and they pay me two, two grand. No <laughs> All right, any other questions? You got a question, Brenda? Yes, you, you're obviously talking about extensions. I don't download in Mozilla Firefox, so I can play Pogo. Yeah. And every com everything comes up y Yahoo since I did it, and I can't find a program to get rid of it. Okay, you have to change that in Firefox. You're talking about Firefox, right? Yes. Okay, you have to change that in Firefox. You're going to go to, um, I believe it's tools, tools. and options. <laughs> and under the general tab of your options, your home page has been changed to Yahoo. And yet when I press the Google Chrome, I still get MSN as yeah. homepage. Yeah, oh, okay. it's only changed it in there. So that's where you need to go. You need to go to Tools and Options, and then you change this line right here. Okay, okay. just highlight it, just highlight it. Oops, highlight it. Um, Backspace it to nothing. Put in what you want. You can either put in. Well, do you want Google or what are you looking for? Uh, 
Pogo.com. Oh, Pogo.com. Okay, yes, you can do Pogo.com or you can do www.pogo.com. Okay. If one don't work, the other one will. Okay. Dub, dub, dub. Okay, uh, so that's that question answered. Um, anything else? Anything else? Okay, I think we'll, uh, it's uh, five minutes to two, so uh, we'll knock it off right here. Um, we will have uh, again in two weeks, um, and um, we've talked this over before the class. Uh, we're going to have uh, uh, class in two weeks, and then in the middle of June, and then that'll be it for the year. So. Uh, July and August will be taking off and then I will let you know when uh, when we start back up again in, in September so hopefully by then I'm back at work yeah hopefully he's, he's out of the house and back at work yeah okay so there you go folks thanks very much and we'll see you in two weeks That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.